What's a place chasing Larry Hill with a new kind of limited series big I do? We're a Swindon Town director of football read, but you can read the title, you know what's happening. Ollie's at the wheel, we're gonna go manager by manager. Might just be one manager. I don't think it will be, I'll be honest. And uh, see how things go. I was gonna get this video out yesterday, but uh my voice was not good after the game on Saturday, I'll be honest. Speaking was not my strong point. <laughs> so I don't know. Let's get to know this a little bit. Anyway, gonna roll a quick intro. And we'll get into the setup for things in the game. So here we are in day one of Ollie on the job. If you're, uh, if you're familiar with the director of Football Challenge, essentially the way it goes down is this. I am only in charge of picking the managers and signing the players. I don't pick the team. I don't pick the tactics. I don't do anything else. I just buy the players and I pick the manager. And let him get on with it. But of course, we already have a manager in place. It is, of course, the legend that he is, Ian Holloway, has joined us, start off really well in real life as well. And he looks pretty good for us. In the game, this is this is great out because in the game, he says not being available for footballing role. You possibly see here, he says he's retired from hands on role, but I forced him back into the job. So uh, he's going to have to get over it, I guess. That's going to be the thing. We've got a two year deal. Uh, because I messed up when I set it up in the editor and I didn't remember that we were doing the FM25 database on FM24, so we're a year behind. It's fine, we're going for two years, so until the end of this season, it's going to work out perfectly. But the things to know here are that Ollie prefers to play a 4 3 3 DM wide formation. And if we go with his managerial, uh, he likes domestic based players, so I'm going to try that. Uh, likes to have young, young signings, have under 24 players for the first team, wants a large squad and uh, likes to use counter attacks are kind of the big thing and likes to operate without our assistant manager which is okay i'm fine with that that's all good so let's have a look at this first situation i've, I've obviously done the yearbook because i've seen this season he likes to play the ball three three uh counter attacking on one front alone the tactic was saved in there uh so let's do the direct counter attack or pick the four three three dm wide and we'll have a look and see what it says our best formation is in that system. So, well, our best team in that system is, I should say. So, our best team, starting out, we'll ignore the uh, random messaging. Uh, Daniel Barley in goal, he's on loan to us from Norwich. He's uh, he's okay. He's not the best goalkeeper in the world. We've also Jack Bycroft, again, not the best goalkeeper in the world. Certainly, I'll be looking to improve it in this first transfer window. Jeff King at right back's a very solid right back when he's fit. Uh, Brown Hall, very good centre-half has played at higher levels. Big problem with him is he's not very quick. He's 31 already. He's not very quick. But he has played a lot of football in the championship. He's in his second spell out of Sweden. Uh, he's played for Middlesbrough. He's played for QPR. He was at Rotherham the season before last. Has had spells at Burnley and at Blackpool. Came through Tottenham's academy. But, you know, again, had some good loans. And just, you know, he's been a solid defender. But he's coming towards the end of his career. So something for us to pay attention to. Also starts the season injured, which is not terribly helpful. Uh, reckons alongside him, we're going to have Ryan Delaney, Irish, under 21 in caps. Again, doesn't have any pace in for a counter attacking system. You need pace. Or look at pace. Or says he's a National League quality player. But he's been playing in League One for most of his career, so a bit harsh, maybe. But, you know, we can only go with what the game is telling us. But George Cox, a left back who is a very, very good left back, perhaps played in the Netherlands in the era of his for Fortuna Sittard, came through at, at Brighton as well so a very good player he's actually a very good player too he hasn't good enough pace for this level he's just a generally good all-round left back both in way of life and in this game and uh yeah he's uh as in a league one level player already apparently ahead of them well we would ideally have nandy off the ball uh i love nandy he's a great player uh his natural fitness they are at the stamina kind of they don't do service to where he is in real life. He's been on, he had a couple of seasons that injured, I think it'll be in his play if it's free. It's not actually so he joined Rangers in 2021, but he actually spent a lot of his time at injured. He joined us last season, the middle of last season. And he's very clearly not back to his best yet, not fully fit, but he's probably actually real life good enough to play in the championship, just on pure ability. Just his fitness isn't there. But in the game, they've ignored that for some reason. So uh we're going to go with it. We're going to rock with that because he'll play a lot of football for us. And I'm uh, a big, big fan of him in real life. But Gavin, you'll kill Kenny ahead of him. And one thing to be aware of is his value here. If he has a good season, we'll probably sell him. He's a, he's a good player in game. I think I don't actually like him very much in real life. 
I think this work rate, I've never seen him give 13 work rate. I think, I think it's a mentality issue. I've never seen him give 13 work rate for us. He could be quite lazy at times, but the game says otherwise, so we'll go with that. And he is apparently our best uh, midfielder, a leading league world player with a potential be leading championship player at 23. So, get a good season, I don't, we'll get some money off him because uh, that much money at this level is the difference between survival and bankruptcy for a club, honestly. Uh, Sonia Khan is allegedly our best box to box midfielder. Interesting, he's all over at Tramway at the moment, and He's been hit and miss for Swindon. Sometimes he's fantastic, sometimes he's terrible. Sometimes he just picks up red cards for no reason. So that's interesting. But as I said, he's not with us this season. He has only ever played a little below this before joining Swindon as well. So something to keep an eye on. Maybe as a place we'll just one will have to straight, but he's not here. Uh, so that's going to be a problem. On the wing, we've got Glatzel on the dirt. I wouldn't have said Glatzel was a winner. He's more of a striker. Joined us from Liverpool last summer. Oh, sorry, last uh, January. And I think this probably reflects where he's at, but his potential might be higher than that. Uh, again, he doesn't really have the pace to be playing on a wing. And I think he's more of a striker. I think I'd fast forward probably a fairer assessment of his best position. But the trouble is, he was an advanced forward. So he will end up playing on the wing under Ian Holloway. Up top, uh, Sean McGurk, that's right. A long time, Sean McGurk. Playing from the inside uh, forward on the left is apparently his best. I actually I agree with this. His best performance in real life is as that playmaker in the, in the middle here. But Ollie looks a 4 3 3, and that doesn't have a playmaker in the 10 role. So we're going to be relying on out wide. Doesn't really have the pace for it, but he's got a little room to develop. He joined us from Leeds and started off at Wigan, and I think he's actually a much, much better player than he's been pretty important in this game. But, you know, we can only, as I say, deal with the hand with Delp. Now, probably guys up top as well. Harry Smith would be expected to be playing as a pressing forward. And the only thing you can do in that role as a pressing forward, I'm sorry, as a, as a striker, is target forward, which this system can you, you can do it with a, with a counter attacking system. I expect Ollie Will to try and get in the team. But again, for this level, you want a pacey striker. Even if you're using a deep blowing forward or a pressing forward, you want a pacey striker. He is very much not that. Um, the key things for him, and it's sort of reflected in the game, is that he's very tall. He's six foot five ish. And uh, he can jump, but he's not, I think his heading's too high. He doesn't actually do a lot else well. He's just a big man you ping up all in the general direction of. I hope he does something with it. And in real life, more often than not, he doesn't. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to be looking for a striker in the, in the first transfer window. I tell other players to watch out for Will Wright. He is a very good centre half. He can play right back again. His pace is suspect, but he likes to take dead balls. A 14 throwing throws is a little bit ambitious because he very rarely gets it into the box. But he is our set piece taker for pretty much every set piece in real life, which is why he's our top scorer in real life this season, which is a bit terrifying. Uh, Ollie Clark is the club captain. He's currently injured as well. He's had a long career. One of all the players in this squad, he's 31. Has had a decent career with Mansfield, with Bristol Rovers. Well, forgive him for that. Uh, well, forgive him for that as long as he plays well. Uh, but again, he's not the quickest player in the world. He's not necessarily the best player technically or mentally in the world. And it says that he wants to be a ball winning or a box to box midfielder. We'll see how that goes. And again, he's our captain, but I wouldn't say he's the strongest leader in the squad. So we'll have to look to see if we can find someone to help with that too. Oh, Aaron Dryden on the right-hand side as well. He is, uh, I say on the right-hand side, that's where I think he'll play. But he is actually our best pressing forward. So we'll see how that goes for him. He's got the pace. He's had an interesting career. He's played in Sweden. He's played in the League of Ireland. Has played in the Scottish Championship. And has played for Leeson Orient for Ipswich for a long, long time. Came through at Cork. But... Again, one of those players that not super to be inspired real life. I don't think he's necessarily the, uh, the attacking threat for this division. Uh, other players to watch out for. Jake Kane can develop nicely, but I don't know if he will. Came for at Liverpool's academy. Had a season all over at Newport. He joined us. And uh, he could be a great player. I just, it's just 50-50 whether he will be. I'm pretty sure we're sending out on loan though for this season. Uh, best watch out for the homegrown player that are going to be key here. So we've got Harrison Minton, who is a, a homegrown centre-half. 
very good at the centre half in real life and probably will make it to the championship with or without us, if I'm honest. But he's only 19, has some space to grow, so we'll look out for him coming through into the first team. He's going to be a really key player for us. Uh, Danny Butterworth was an attacking with a stroke. He gives some competition on the wings. I don't like him as a stroke, but it says he's sort of in his best positions, but I really don't like him as a stroke, but I do think he's better as a winger or even deep, honestly. And uh, we'll see what we can do with him. Again, a player that could do good things if he gets just the right game time, the right coaching. Start off Man United, Kings Block, Blackburn, went all over Fleetwood at Port Vale. If he's joined us now on a free, so we'll see what he does for us. And uh, other things to watch out for Joe, Joe Cottrell on loan from Swansea. I don't think he's very good enough. He's David Cottrell's cousin, and David Cottrell's got a bit, uh, a bit loopy. Uh, in a way, hopefully it's not genetic, but again, a very generic central midfielder, and I don't know how well he'll develop with us. Uh, the other player to watch out for, Miguel Freckleton, can be a liability at his best. He's on to us from Sheffield United. I might send him back in January because if he doesn't get any game time, he certainly has said he has a lot of mistakes in him. I uh, don't think he's ready to be playing at this level, but you know, we'll see what Ollie thinks because ultimately, if Ollie's picking him, I'll keep him. And if he's not picked me, I'll send him home, if I'm honest. Uh, to me, say Sobawali, great right back. I love him in the right back. I think this pace is probably underselling him a little bit. He also has a, has a box of friends from him. I think, uh, I think maybe that 30 for Flair is a little bit low, but he can pull all, all the way to the right side and in central midfield. And will be a threat for us. He's 24 years old. Came to us from Waterford in Ireland. So he's had an interesting start to his career. Hopefully that will continue to improve for him, though. He can, he can be a key player at Swimming. Uh, Pharrell Jones is a big young centre-half who has joined us from Nottingham Forest. I like his pace. I think if he can develop, we'll do really well with him as well. But again, all comes down to who Oli picks. And otherwise, there's some, a little bit of depth there. Also, in our development centre, it's been really key for us. A couple of players I really like as youngsters who are here for us. John McGregor scored the winning goal on Saturday, or Saturday scored the approach for the equalising goal for Saturday. Local boy has looked really, really good when he's coming to the first team. I think he's got boundless, boundless potential. In real life, I think he'll be a top quality championship player before his career is done. But we'll see how it goes for him in the game, because uh, obviously Oli has to pick him for that to improve. Uh, Redmond Evans is a goalkeeper to look out for. He's our third choice in real life. And... He's young, he's 17, can still develop. He's actually been on loan for us a couple of times, but it's not worth it in the game. And I think he'll do really well for us long term. I really like Sonny Hart as a centre half. I think he can do really well. He needs to improve his pace. But I think with time, 16 years old, he's got good determination, to a fairly determined personality. If Ollie fancies him, or if the next manager fancies him, if Ollie's already gone, then uh, he'll do really well. Jackson Brown, 50-50 on Jackson Brown as a player. He could do well. He could do badly. I guess we'll find out with the benefit of time how his development goes. The two, the two players I'm very excited for are our strikers and our youth team. First is Miles Abodo. Uh, I don't think he has a second nationality in gay, but I think he might actually be Nigerian. I think he might have Nigerian parents. Uh, he's very quick. He's going to be a very good Probably poacher or as well as forward for us, but of course, he's got that kind of can develop into anything situation. I think he will in real life and, and for us become a very good player. Again, only 16 years old. And Bota Amin is another player who I think striker wise in real life plays for Iraq's under 20s, I think, or the under 19s. He's a youth international for Iraq. And again, very quick, has some very good potential. Has grown up locally, come from, come to our youth team. And again, I think if this determination can be improved with a little bit of mentoring, I think he could become a really, really good player for us. Now, the Eagle Eye on you are there's another high potential youngster for our youth team. Harley Hunt actually left us for Middlesbrough in real life in the summer. Came for our youth team, played once or twice for us last season. Looks incredible. Middlesbrough built themselves a hell of a player. I have set up a game to reflect that real life transfer. So if he will go for the fee he went for, and we will we will make that work for us. So that's the setup so far. Otherwise, our club vision, we are looking for improvement improvement on or off the pitch, which honestly 
is an Amazon page which was then playing to be in the press. Uh, we were able to record a top half finish, be competitive in the cup, and reach the knockout of the Bristol Street Motors Tampax Sherpa Lands Trophy. Which is fine, also whether in the wage budget and maximum one year contracts for big over for over age players. Obviously, as fans, we want more that, we want nice conviction football and attacking football. That's what we historically have always played. Our last few managers apparently haven't grasped this and just think that they should move it up the field. But Oli likes to play that style of football. It's a good fit for us. And obviously, we want to be competitive against our rivals, who, of course, are off United, Bristol City, Bristol Rovers, Reading. I want to finish up Newport County. I wouldn't call them a traditional rival, but they've sort of become one. And the sport would like us to reach the playoffs. That's what we're aiming for. Finally, we'll look at how we're doing things financially before we move forward. Financially, £595,000 in the bank. I guarantee we don't have that in the bank in real life. Uh, but we are projected to make money this season, which is really nice. I'm going to try and keep us in the black if I can. We'll see how that goes, because 50 50. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, we'll come back in just a second at the end of the first transfer window, see how that's gone. And then we'll go to January, at the end of the season, and so forth. Whilst Oli is still in the club. So, end of the first window, and I would say things are going pretty well for us. We've played four, one, three, draw one, lost nothing. We're top of the league with a plus eight goal difference. That's a very strong start for us, for sure. Let's have a look, see what the squad stats be saying. And uh, appearance wise, see, sort of almost found a preferred first 11. You'll also see it brought in some new players. But let's go through the new players first. That's a way more sensible way of doing this. So, I've made a lot of signings for us. Well, obviously, ignore the ones I didn't do. Uh, we've made a lot of signings just because I wanted to fill up the squad. We had a very small squad. It did say that Oli likes a big squad. So I've worked in the budget as well as I can in that respect. I brought in Nathan Fisher, a goalkeeper on loan from Middlesbrough. He didn't turn out to be as good as I hoped, but we're not paying him. So that's fine. He also has only played once in the cup and kept a clean sheet. So Fair play to him. He might turn out to be decent. So we'll, we'll hope he does okay. Uh, we've got Rory Feely coming as well. Yeah, it's been a lot of signings that have just been sort of feeling gaps. Or filling gaps, I should say. And uh, just adding to the squad. I like the look of Rory Feely. I noticed we didn't have a very good uh, ball-playing defender in the squad. So I set a ball-playing defender filter for the scout players we had. He came up. Apparently he's only a leading National League player. But he's apparently a good ball-playing defender. I'm not. 100% sure I agree. He's a very good generic centre half. I don't know if I actually get any game time, but he was all the best that came up. So I signed him up on a free anyway, just because why not, right? Released by Barrow, previously played for Bikini, St. Pats, and for Waterford in Ireland. So had a very good career in Ireland, it's safe to say. 150 odd, 167 league appearances in the Irish Premier Division, which is very, very nice for him. Uh, quite a Sean McGuire, it's really controversial. I want a striker that can score goals. Sean Maguire, I'm pretty sure, has played for Oxford in real life. I don't know if it was their last season. And that's why I still want to I'm fairly sure he's played for, played for Oxford. Either way, well, forgive him. Uh, because he's got 12 caps for Ireland, scored one goal, had a need some in the championship for Coventry, for Preston. Uh, previously, of course, played in the League of Ireland, having joined them for West Ham, having had spent some time now, I guess, in their academy would be my guess, judging by the time scale. But, one problem I have got with him is uh, what, since he's left Ireland, he's not been a particularly prolific goal scorer. Uh, I am looking for a goal scorer. That said, he has had two goals in four new games for us, two in six overall, and had a very good average racing. So that's nice to see. He's come in and done well. And again, he's playing as kind of, I think he's being played at both the deep line and pressing forward. He does both roles very well. So we'll look, see how he's been being used. He's been being used in both roles, which is nice to see. That's always, always good to see for us. And uh, yeah, we'll have a, we'll get back to him as a deep layer forward very quickly. He is very, very good in that role. At this level. We'll see what he can do for us goals wise though, because we will need goals from somewhere. Our other players who come in, of course, with Barry Hepburn. He's come in, joined us from Queen's Park, I believe. I'm oh, sorry, joined us from, from Bayern Munich, started at Celtic, went to Bayern Munich, Played for their seconds. They were allowed to Queen's Park and curiously didn't play. We've signed them on a free because they released him. And uh, I think for a young player, he looks okay. We'll see how he develops, but I think he looks okay. I don't think he'll be a regular first team player, although he has made a debut for us. But 
Again, we'll keep an eye because Oli likes a winger and he is a winger. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Caleb Cisse also came in just to plug some gaps as a, again, if you, I've signed a lot of players who are here to be good young players to develop them. So he can play down the middle, he can play on the right. He's improving at a decent rate. He's already a National League player, potentially a two standard, two goals in two games for Sierra Leone. And he came through Tottenham's youth system. So could be a player for us. We'll see how that goes. Uh, people who watch the journey will know, oh, totally on the journey, Red Feet Blue, the other new series on the channel, uh, will know DJ Captain Sturridge. I've got him at FC United. I thought I'd see what he could do for us. Decent, decent National League player would lead one potential, is what we're saying. We're going to try and get him out on loan, I think. To help that development, see if he can make that League One standard. Because if he does, he'll be very good for us. He's not ready yet, but he will be good for us if he can develop on loan. Uh, Tristan Aberdeen Goodridge had also come in as a left winger. Again, another young player to develop. He's been around the block a little bit. He's 20 years old. Uh, has played for AFC Wimbledon, for Aston Villa, for Hayes and Yedding, and for Westfield. So he's dropping down the leagues. He's kind of giving him a, a second chance to come back. And again, he's quick, he's a winger. If he can get everything else going for him, he might be a player for us for the future. It's very much players for the future because that's what they said they want. Oh, that's what Ollie wanted. Uh, Archie Woods is coming. He is a defensive midfielder slash regular midfielder. He's currently been sent out on loan at Yeovil. What your voice was doing. Uh, he signed up at West Ham, but on loan at Darford, and he's now joined us on a free, having been released by West Ham. And Clara went into Yeovil, who are sort of local rivals, but it's not a big enough rivalry where I was feeling bad about loaning out. He's going to go play in the National League for a year to see how he develops. Brought some experience as well because I wanted some experience in that back line. I tell you what, so that I couldn't find any good young players. It for the back line that I thought would actually play aside from the one Irish lad. So Scott Downs coming at 36, two caps for the under 21s. Has absolutely no pace. The absolute antithesis of what I said I was looking for. But needs must. And he's played for Reading. So he's got to prove himself here. But he has also played lots of years in the Premier League, of course, for Crystal Palace. He's played for Blackburn. He's played for Bowie. He's been a consistent Premier League slash championship player for most of his career. Although he did start off at Warsaw, what they played in Denmark for a while in the national. He's had an odd career. But Scott Dad, I think, could be good for us. So... Again, it's just going to hold over. He's got decent enough mental stats to be a mentor for someone. And crucially, he's very, very big, very good in the air. He's not the first person I signed that fits that description. Uh, Joe Walsh came in as a seven and a half as well. He's Welsh. Again, no pace whatsoever. Absolutely no pace. But his tacticals and mentals are there to hopefully push over the line. He's played three games for us. and He's been decent. Joins us from Lincoln, where he was playing in League One last season. But he's played a lot of games this level which I think is valuable experience. So we'll see if he can help us out. That would be very, very good. Uh, moving forward, there are some loans, of course, because you have to have loans. Don't believe me, just ask Zealand. So, uh, first loan to in was Malcolm Frauenborn. Unfortunately, has got injured. He's a German in the 19 and stuff. He's only going to be out for a couple of weeks. But has started very strongly for us. Has played one game for us. Got a, six, got a 7.3. And can play absolutely everywhere on the pitch. We love to see it. Good determination. He should develop very, very well with us. And if we're lucky, Liverpool will release him and we'll be able to sign it back. Also, I'd like to look for a goalkeeper. Vitya Shrav Yarosh, a Czech under-21 international. He's almost at the cap of his potential, but luckily, is good enough for this level. I think actually he looks like a very, very good goalkeeper. And again, let's have an interesting career. Sign of Slavia Prime, of course, during Liverpool. Went all alone at some parts, never played for Liverpool, went all alone at Notts County and at Stockport, and I think he did pretty well there. So we'll keep an eye out to what he can do for us. Player I'm very excited about is Tyler Fredericks on loan from Manchester. Has only played once for us, is a centre half, and has very good potential. And I just have a feeling we'll get a lot of game time for us. Also, played in the League Cup for us. I think he'll develop very well. We'll see what he does with Tyler Fredericks, and I promise you won't be big windows eyes everywhere, though, hopefully. But, you know, that's why. Uh, Nico O'Reilly's on that player I really liked, and I've, I loaned him a few places before. Very good attacking midfielder, but can play as a, as a strike or as a central midfielder. We'll see what Ollie does with him. Doesn't have a lot of pace, but has some good acceleration. 
and a very good playmaker at this level with the passing and, and the vision and the work rate and the teamwork. I think he'll be very good for us. Again, he's never played for City, but will probably develop into a good player for us and for them in real life, I think. Uh, Hartley Davis, another goalkeeper. I've got so many goalkeepers, I'll turn it into a mega dad. But I did need the, uh, I did need some extra goalkeepers because, I, as I said, I'm not a huge fan of Jack Bycroft. I was hoping to find someone better than Daniel Barden, but the game doesn't think I have. He's played a League Cup game as well, which means he must have got through a round of the League Cup. We'll have a look in a second. We'll see what the actual results are like. But I think Harvey Davis will be a very, very good goalkeeper. I was learn from Chelsea is Jimmy Toria or Toriaida. I think that's how you pronounce that. Okay, again, he can play almost everywhere on the pitch, which we love to see. And looks like he's got some decent potential, has some good pace. If he can start playing some football for us, I'm uh, very aware we've got a loan in it, but, you know, we needed bodies in the squad to make Ollie happy. I think he'll be really well for us if he gets sort of established in the first team. But again, I've got back to the same well over and over again. It's players who can play everywhere who just happen to be attacking midfielders. Matt Robson joins us from Spurs. He's never played for Spurs as far as I'm aware in real life. Obviously, we're missing a season of data. But again, I think it's a very good all round. I have a feeling I loaned him at Sunwood. I've got a weird feeling I had a loan at Sunwood a couple of games ago. But a very good looking young player. And uh, yeah, can apparently play in the championship if his career goes well. So we'll see what that looks like with us. Uh, Luke Plange joins us from Crystal Palace. What an odd even old club. He's had a very interesting random career for a 20 year old as well. Sort of quickish striker who's still put the ball at his feet and can play on both wings. Again, options in the box. Started at Arsenal, went, on, went to Derby on a free, played well enough there that Palace paid a million quid for him, loaning back to Derby. I think that might have been under Frank Lampard, off the top of my head. Then he had a loan in the Pro League in Belgium, had a loan in League One with Lincoln, spent some time at Carlisle, but apparently didn't play, and then got Premier League football this season with Crystal Palace before I brought him. So they obviously fancy him a little bit, all they've got in injury crisis. We'll see what he can do for us. He's only played in the League Cup so far. Again, it keeps going. It's keep going. Sam Murray is a left back, joins us from Manchester United, has only played the Carabao Cup for now, but is back up to Coxie, I think, essentially was my thinking of this. Just a good, solid backup for Coxie because Coca-Cola will leave us in January, I'm pretty certain of it. And uh, Ron Gillo tends to be better played further forward. So we'll see what he can do for us. Cody Cody is a holding midfielder from Manchester United. He's currently injured, which is unfortunate. We'll be out for a few more weeks. But again, I think we're pretty good all round. Don't think he's a National League player. I think he's better than that. And we'll see if he comes into our team as he gets fit and as Oli develops things. We've brought him Dominic Gape on a free. He was released by Southampton. Oh, sorry, by Wickham. So I've got it further back. He was released by Sutton, apparently. Uh, previously with Wickham, before that with Southampton, played a lot of games for Wickham though, he's 28 years old, played a lot of games for Wickham in the Championship League 1 and League 2, so known as the Football League, I think he's a solid signing in midfield, gives us an extra option there, he's not going to get any better, but he gives us a good option there, just so Ollie can switch things up if he needs to, or replace injured players, he's very much going to be a squad player, who should be impressive. I've got to the old boys brigade again, though, for a seven and a half. Winston Reed is 35 with 33 caps and one goal for New Zealand. You, of course, will know his name because he's very tall. He's a very good captain, to be honest, and has played for West Ham forever. I say played for, he's been with West Ham forever. This team to have played for a few seasons, had a couple of loans out. This team to have played for a few seasons. Was, I seem to remember the first big product, product of the Michelin Academy as well which is nice for him. Again, his legs are gone, but his mentals are fantastic and his technicals are very, very good and should compensate for any loss of pace, I think, is what I'm hoping with him. Uh, Matthew Whittingham is coming on loan from, uh, from Wolves just to give us an extra body on the left-hand side and in centre, again, in versatility, squad depth is what we've looked for here. Started off at Manchester City before going to Wolves and we've signed him on loan to see if we can give his career I don't know, Abu. I don't know why he's a left-sided player with that pace, but if he's good enough to play in the middle for us and be a bit of a playmaker, I think I'll be quite happy with him as a loan. But again, all on Ollie. And finally, Sil Swinkles joins us as a centre-half 
He's Dutch. He's 19 years old. He's very big. He's actually got some pace and determination. And actually, it's good enough just in the areas technically you want for a center half without being any frills or faff, which is quite nice. So with that said, budget-wise, I've not destroyed the bank entirely, although we are half a million, 20 year on over our wage budget, which is going to be an FFP problem. It's already an FFP problem. You can see here, already an FFP problem. But a car wage is by 34 grand, which I'll send a few players on loan. I uh, should sort us out for a little while. Projection-wise, we're also going to lose half a million quid this year. But I think we'll fix it. I have a feeling we'll fix it. There are a couple of players I could sell if I need to. If we can sort players by transfer budget. Gavin Kilkenny has already got up in value to be worth somewhere around 1.9 to 3.2 million, which is very nice. Uh, Nandy is also worth about half a million quid, realistically. Coxie is a player you can get. If you get half a million for the end of the season, I know because I've done it. So I'm not worried about the club's finances just yet. But with that said, let's get forward to January and see how things are shaking out. Here we are at the beginning of March. I'm calling this the January update. I'm a little bit carried away with some transfers. Uh, some stuff happened. Uh, it's, it's the best way of putting it. Uh, in terms of the league table, we're doing pretty well. We're set in the playoffs, which is far better than we are in real life. And indeed, we're expecting the game. 38 played, 66 points, 19 wins, 9 draws, 10 losses. We will actually do a, because I, re I realized I forgot to do a catch up of what was going on in the, uh, in the actual games. We'll do that in just a second. We'll talk through what's going on. I have got an offer in, or oh, an offer received on a loan for Danny Butterworth. That's because, he wasn't really playing for us, which is interesting because I think he's a good enough player to be in our team. But Oli did not fancy him, which is a problem. But there has been some business done in January, of course, because frankly, we had to do some business. So in terms of players coming in, I got Matty James in our free. I was very happy with that as an extra, an extra sort of central midfielder slash defensive midfielder. Again, he's a little bit old, but say old. Obviously, if you're watching Matty, I don't mean old, old, but he's a little bit older than I was looking for with the player profile. But he's very good. He's such a good footballer. Of course, uh, has had the misfortune of spending time at Bristol City, but I can't afford to hold that against him. Also, he played for Coventry Barnes. He's lost a championship football player for a long time with Leicester in the Premier League and is technically a Premier League winner with him. And of course, started off his career at Manchester United, barring a couple of loans at Preston. Very, very good footballer, especially on this level. He's too good for this level. But for some reason, Oli not playing him a lot yet. We'll see if he gets into the first team. That's fine. You know, these things happen. Uh, we also brought in Rakeem Harper on a free. He's Jamaican at uh, 23 years old. It's a very, very tasty potential. Uh, he was previously at uh, Ipswich. They've released him, I think, mid-season. In fact, no, he's just been available all season. I've not, so I've not picked him up until now. But he's previously started off at West Brom, a very good academy, of course. Went all over to Blackburn, played in the championship at West Brom. Went to Birmingham, played in the championship there as well. Premier League football with West Brom. League One football with Ipswich, followed by League One football with Crew and with Exeter. Joins us. He's young enough to improve. He's very, very good as a midfielder as well. Plays as a Masala too. Don't know why he's declining. I'm guessing because it's because he's not made some signing for us. You'd like to think he'd be good enough to break through. So we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, we've also, again, all our threes brought in Kerr McEnroy, 23 years old. One in his 21 cap for Scotland. Can play anywhere in the, can play anywhere in the centre of midfield. And as a left back, joins us from uh, Kilmarnock, having been released by Kilmarnock after a loan spell at Partick Thistle. Uh, previous singles with Celtic, Airdrie, uh, uh, Air and Dunk Furman. So he's had some good football, good exposure to football in Scotland. Again, he's not a world beater. He's just there to add bodies to a squad that was struggling a little bit with injuries, I noticed. So again, it's just, you know, throwing money at the problem, add depth, and can shoot for range, which is always good for a, a guy who can step up, maybe take a free kick. Uh, George Camille, I'm pronouncing this, let me know the comments that's wrong. It's a Polish 19 year old who has come in again on a free, having been released by Blackburn. 
eight goals, sorry, four goals in eight games in the Northwest Counties Premier League. He doesn't bode well at this level, but has some potential. He's costing us next to nothing, I thought. He's got under 21 caps. He must be fairly decent. We'll see how he develops for us. That's going to be a really big question mark for him with us. I did notice that, well, look at a second. But we're not necessarily getting all the goals I want up top. Bit of a spoiler. I think we need to score more goals. But the same time I was thinking in the January transfer window. Best I could do was John Daddy Boy Farson. Bod Farson. I don't know how to pronounce these characters, uh, but that's life. Uh, previously a Bolter. I think he's just joined uh, Rexon in real life, funny enough. But previously with Bolton, Millwall, Reading, Wolves, Kaiser, Slavs, and Viking in Norway, and uh, obviously playing for uh, Selfos in Iceland. So he's playing everywhere. 65 taps and five goal tries, so it's not a bad return. And again, he's just kind of a big guy up top that can play a few roles we've been using and should hopefully get some gold for us. It's very four of us off the bench. So he's filling out his role very, very nicely as that kind of backup to Sean Maguire. And uh, our final in was Keenan Bennett, who is uh, everyone on the left side player who has some good pace for this level, has already played, got a 7.4 and an assist on his debut. He has had, a, again, an interesting career. Start off at Spurs, Borussia Mönchengladbach glad back and paid two million for him, loaning him back to uh, Ipswich in League One. So he's linking up with an ex-teammate there as well and uh, has played in the Bundesliga a handful of times before joining Darmstadt, getting released, and we've brought him home, essentially. And I think he could be a really, really good player for us as the team develops. Now, of course, you just saw our budget. You know, I didn't have any money, so I must have made some sales. And over all the my move players on in January. So, uh, Jack Bycroft gets sold to Preston North End for £38,000. I do not know why a championship club wants him as a third of goalkeeper. But they paid us more than we paid for him. We paid a profit on him. We got him off our books. He was the one that moved on. That's a very, very good sale already. But I'm very happy with all our business in January, to be honest. Uh, so, uh, Tanisa Sobolani, do I love in real life, was not playing for Oli. Oli did not fancy him in the slightest. So I took some money for him, 64000 from Burton just to get him and his wages off the books. Essentially was what was going on there. Uh, Barry Hepburn's got a loan to Pete Head, a few of my youngsters have got a loan to Chip and a Super Marine. Callum Cissé has joined Harlequin. Scott Dan wasn't playing for us, so when Exeter showed the interest, I just got his work. He was on £47,000 a year. I just got him off the wage budget because he's only played six games for us. He's getting on a bit, and if Exeter want to take him off our hands, I'll do it. This is a good time of year to find better young players. Uh, DJ Captain Sturridge has gone to Dagnall on the loan. Archie Mills gone to Sudbury on the loan. Finley Toombs and Harry Chard, two of our youngsters, have gone to Hungerford. Jackson Brown has gone to Leamington. Uh, Liam Hutt has gone to Hungerford. Ryan Delaney has been sold to Lincoln. Again, wasn't playing for us much, really. So when I got offered money for him, it just seemed sensible to get him off our books. He was on the same wage he's basically at Lincoln pretty much. He's on fifty or thousand pound a year. And I'm not paying fifty thousand pound a year to someone who's not playing. So we got off felt we took it, we let him go. That's good times. Harry Smith got off from South End for as well. Wasn't really playing. Good to get him off our books. He has actually got two and two for South End, but I actually do think the National League is kind of his level in real life. So we got 3.8 thousand, uh, 3.8k for him. We got, you know, 50k off our wage budget. It's, it was a no brainer. It was a real no brainer of a sale. And finally, Winston Reed has gone on to Perth Glory. And again, he was playing, but you'll see in a second, not regularly enough, really. He's based on 20 years off the bench, only started four games for us. So alone where they're paying us to have him, honestly, I'm quite happy with that because his contract's running out. We've essentially got paid to let him leave, and I think he'll be a lot happier. So let's have a go at the going on in the league because that is, of course, the big story of what we're doing so far. Uh, we have, of course, as I mentioned, we're getting a bit friendly because they're not, they're not used to anyone. Uh, 
she, we've, we've got to fit in the league, start off really strongly, didn't lose a game in our first five, then lost to Brentford in the cup, the EFL Cup second round, which honestly, not too shameful, it was a penalty shootout loss as well, which, uh, you know, that's not, it's not embarrassing for us, it's got to be said. Uh, we drew against Newport County, we beat Bristol Rovers in the Cup, that's always happy days. Went on again, unbeaten in September. Didn't actually lose a league game until the middle of October, which is beautiful. Did lose to Bromley in the Tampax Sherpa Band Trophy. No one cares. Uh, but Harrogate was our first loss. Things did get a bit shaky from there on out. I was a little bit worried when I looked at this off camera. We uh, we played Barrow and Boyan with Melcamo Farad Fraudorf scoring goals, which is nice to see. Lost to McDonald's. Beat Chesterfield, lost to Scarborough in the first round of the FA Cup, which is honestly very embarrassing. Then lost to Bradford, beat Morecambe, lost to Northampton in the trophy, which honestly we've stopped caring about at that point because it was never going to happen for us. Uh, we have beaten Gillingham and then things just got horrible throughout, throughout uh, December. And you can see why I decided to start looking for more, uh, more options, I guess, for Ollie, because we didn't win a game then for four in a row. Beat Salford 4-0 out of nowhere with goals from Frauendorf and O'Reilly. We then beat Tramier. I thought maybe things were on the other of the way. He did change the system. He has a weird thing where he changes to a 5-2-1-2 occasionally. I don't know why. Maybe it was injuries that was all he had available, but he's got a massive score, so I don't know why he's done that. He's gone back to the 4-3-3 to lose against Grimsby, which is disappointing for him and me, to be honest. Lost to Harrogate. Then started putting some, some fall together in the middle of January as we started bringing in players. So I've got a 1-0 against Crew, a 0-0 with Barrow, a 2-1 win over Doncaster, a 2-1 draw with McDonald's. Then lost to Colchester, which was disappointing. But then February comes around. February is beautiful. 2 2 at Charlton, 2 2 at, uh, sorry, I get our home to Notts County. A, four, a 1 0 win away at Carlisle, 1 0 away at Chesterfield, 2 1 at home to Bradford, 2 0 again with that 5 2 1 2 thing for some reason. Uh, 2 0 at home to Walker. And we've just lost to Doncaster, which is fine because. As I said, we're fifth in the table. That's actually pretty good for us. I'm quite happy with that. And if we get, again, go by who he's using, who he's not, I've made Nandy off the ball unhappy because he wants a new contract and I can't offer him one, which is really disappointing because I want him to stay. Uh, he's liking Sean Maguire, 13 and 35. I would like to see more goals from him, but, you know, that's why I brought in uh, Buffarsen to play instead. Uh, Joe Walsh, he's liking a lot. 32 starts, six off the bench. He's liking him. He's liking to slap Yarosh as a goalkeeper. Uh, again, Cox, he's doing very well. Clark's getting in there. Grant Hall's getting in there. Jeff King's playing a lot as well, which is nice to see. Uh, he likes Fredrickson and O'Reilly, which is good. Likes Kill Kenny. Well, well, my signings, but he likes him. Uh, McGurk's getting some good football. He really seems to like Frauer North on the road. Six goals, three assists in 19 is a very good return. Uh, Glatzel, he's using sort of sparingly, but he's had nine goals so far. He seems to like Whittingham. Collier's is getting a lot of games. He's making good use of these lone players, considering there are so many of them that you like to, you know, for their parent club, but most of them playing more often. But Band is playing, Toriano is playing, Murray is getting some good games. Davis, I think, is being used as a cup goalkeeper primarily. Uh, still, Swingle is getting fair rotation game time. Will Wright's a player will probably have to move on at the end of the season because, frankly, he's not playing enough for a player making that kind of money, £52,000 a year. But also, talking of players not playing enough for big money, Aaron Dryden has only played one star, eight sub appearances, £130,000 a year. If he doesn't break into the first team soon, he is not going to, I'm already trying to sell it. He's going to be gone for sure. For sure, will be gone in, uh, in the end of season transfer window. And there's a few players who are out there. He doesn't like Dominic Gate. He's not using Joel McGregor, which I don't like. I'm going to try and get him out on loan because I want him to be playing. I think he can be a lot better 
and I think he's a home run lad, should be playing. But otherwise, he's not been not using any of our players that we're, we've brought in, which is nice to see. We've kind of trimmed the squad a little bit, and things are going okay financially. We are back within a financial fair play, just, uh, just with 40k margin a year, but we're just there. And financially, projection wise, we've we stopped the bleeding a little bit. So that's nice to see. Let's shoot 40 in the season, though. This is for you, going to be ridiculous, I'm already aware. And see how things are going when we get to the end of the season. So, end of the season, we're in May. And the first thing I know by looking at this here league table is that we have finished fourth and we've won the playoffs. We have got ourselves a 3 2 win at Wembley against Harrogate. We never win at the new Wembley. Old Wembley, absolute fortress for us. We never win at the new Wembley. So that has gone very well. Uh, for some reason, I've started doing the tree properly, which is beautiful. That's worked out really well. Let's do it that way. So in the semi final, we overcame Walsall 4 3 on aggregate. But the, uh, the run in was suddenly quite spectacular for us. We left it after, I'm trying to remember, we left it now. I bring up, I just told you where we left it. Um, essentially, when we, picked, when we left off in Marjorie, we just lost to Doncaster. We played Newport, got a win, two losses against Walsall and Port Vale, beat Bromley, then beat Accrington, lost to Wimbledon, beat Gillingham, beat Fleetwood, and then somehow we were in fourth and in the playoffs. So I don't know how things have gone elsewhere. He's switching back and forth with formations. I haven't really prepared a squad properly for five at the back because I really hate when we play five at the back, both in real life and in the game. So I don't know why that's worked out that way, but such is life. If we go into the competition standings, let's see if we actually did anything useful. Sean McGuire is the top goal scorer in the league with 21 goals, which considering I was a bit nervous, has, uh, has worked out all right. He's also, we've also got Victor Schwab Yarosh with the second highest number of clean sheets, which is quite tasty, to be honest. That's good. So, first season, we were trying for mid table. We've actually got ourselves promoted. And now we've got some work to do. Ollie is, of course, still at the wheel. We can see that here. So, you know, we go one more seat or we go into next season looking for a. Uh, Looking for improvement, see where we can improve the side. So with our first summer out of the way and our first uh, transfer window closed, uh, our, our first full summer transfer window closed, I should say, we currently sit 18th in the League One table and uh, six points from those first five games, two wheels, three losses, spin middling, we lost to Reading, that's always, uh, always disappointing. I had very, dis very often disappointing. Let's do this. Uh, but there we go. I'm not I'm trying to offend Reading fans, but you know, you, if you're a Reading fan, you know why that's disappointing for us. Anyway, uh, so so far we have beaten Burton and Doncaster in our first two games, got through the first round of the League Cup, which is nice. Then things went bad on so many levels. Lost three in a row, piece of Cambridge and Reading. Then we lost to Oxford away in the League Cup, which I'm never going to hear the end of that in the comments. I know for sure. Losing for Reading and Oxford back to back would probably get me lynched outside the counting ground, let's be completely honest. Uh, we'll go back. We beat Red, we beat Exeter. Ollie's set the wheel. We've had a really good window. I'll show you what's been going on in the transfer window because uh it's been it's been a window is what I'm is what I'm saying. It's been a window. Let's look at the outs first. I sent Harrison into the sunny heart out on loan. Uh Dylan Charlton was a new side that came in, in the summer. I think he came in at some point. I sent him out on loan. Uh, Again, Liam McElhinney out on low. Barry Catburst got to East League. Miles Albert, one of those young players I've highlighted at the start. He's had it, having a loan at Dartford. Jay Kane's gone out to Barrow on loan. Chris Aberdeen Goodridge, another signing from last season, have gone on loan. Uh, Pharrell Johnson did not play or develop in any way, shape, or form with us. So I sold him to Milton Keynes for uh, £71,000. I don't know what they're going to do with it, if I'm quite honest, because. He didn't develop at all for us, and uh, I'm not sure he's going to develop any better at Milton Keynes. Watch me be proved wrong, and he goes on to become a Baron Ball winner. Uh, Anton Forshek has got out on loan to Barrow, one of our youngs have got on loan when we started. Aaron Dryan, I couldn't sell him at all. No one would buy him, so he's got on loan to Grant Norton. He's got out on a loan fee for more than we paid for him. 
He's actually scoring in Scotland, which is nice to see, but it is the Scottish Championship, which I guess is about League 2 level. Email from Scotland incoming. Uh, Ricky Aguilar, one of our youngsters, I saw him from Cheltenham. He, in real life, is never going to make it. If I'm honest, uh, he's a lovely bloke, but he's never going to make it, is what I'm going to say about him. So, Cheltenham, a pretty good destination for him, considering that we got him for free from Worthy, and he's been back on loan helper as well. Uh, I loaned him to file the last season for a C, one of my old clubs in real life. Uh, I got led, what, led him to file. They paid me for the privilege, beautiful profit. And then Charlton have just paid me £29,000. And somehow he's getting in their team. I don't know how. They must be terrible for him to be getting in their team. Uh, Callum C says I would love. Sadie Khan came back off loan from Premier last season. Played a game for us and got an assist. Then we got an offer for him. And he's on quite high wages. So I thought I'd just take the 115 k from Rotherham for him and let him go. That seemed like the smartest thing to do just to keep the box a little bit balanced. Sean Maguire, Sean Maguire was the transfer saga from hell this summer. Uh, obviously, it was our top scorer, our top scorer in the league two last season. In his first game for us this season, played once in the league, scored twice. Great stuff. Didn't realise I left a higher league release clause in his contract for three hundred twenty-five thousand pounds. Made even more frustrating by the fact that Rex offer us £1.4 million pound for him, and they're in the same division as us. It was a higher division release clause. And of course, naturally, he chose to go and play in the championship again. So he missed out on a million quid because I screwed up. But it happens, it's football manager. We, we all make mistakes, and that's what happens. Anyway, a bunch of other players have got on loan, but one big sale. A very odd sale, I will say. George Cox has joined Palmer in Syria for £225,000. I, he's very clearly a good League One player. And I don't think he's going to improve to championship level. And he's gone to Syria for 225 k Essentially, he wanted an improved contract. He wanted more money. I didn't have more money to offer him. He was upsetting the dressing room by complaining about wanting more money. So I thought, do you know what? If you're going to be like that, transfer list, off you go. Palmer came with an offer and, uh, well, we've, we've got some money for him. So <laughs> good times. Anyway, let's have a look at who's come in because that's way more important. Uh, Liam McElhinney was the... In fact, Liam McElhinney wasn't the third. Let's just do, I, hate, I hate the way FM does this because there were players who left in, uh, in June as well. Danny Butterworth left us for Cheltenham for 100k. He wasn't playing, as you saw, so it just made sense to offload him. 100k is big money for him. So we'll take that and we'll go all the way to the bank, as we say. And uh, also leaving for a fee was uh, Dominic Gabe, who came in from Sutton, didn't play really. Ross County paid us £86,000 for him, and I just took the money because he's 29. He won't be approving, so that's good times. Anyway, let's talk about the Ian. So let's start in June because that makes way more sense. And I start off, as I often do, by mining the Premier League youth team releases, and I think I've done really well with these. Let me know if you agree in the comments. So, first thing was the goalkeeper, Hugo Fisher from Brighton, and He's one for the future. Somehow he's slow back despite being bored. Hugo Fisher is an under 21 international. He's going to spend the season out alone for us. But I think he's got big potential. I'm quite interested to see how far he can develop. Uh, like both of boy Johnny Emerson from Newcastle. He's a left winger brought in again, 19, capped under 18 level by Scotland, brought in to develop, was at Newcastle before us and was a queen of the, of the south before them so who knows what's happened there he's been on loan to chester for the year and i think again he could develop very well he's got that determination and her turning personality he's got the pace he's not awful in the technicals or the mantles so maybe he'll be a good developing player we'll see how that goes happily just but we had a last little work good times that happens too. Uh, I already have Samuel Smith. I know there is a Samuel Smith at Everton who's really, really, really good. And I can't remember if it's this one. I 
one of the one of the brothers develops really well and one doesn't develop quite so well and i'm hoping i've picked the right one despite him saying league one standard play you can see he's had that uptick in ability already his determination is not great which leads me i may have signed the wrong one but we'll send out a loan and we'll see how he goes because hopefully i've got the right one and not made a huge mistake and wasted some money here's what i'm saying with him uh leo cardenas is coming He's from Trinidad and Tobago. He's 18 years old. Can play both sides at fullback and further at the pitch on the right. Again, he's young, he's quick, he's got potential. All that good stuff that we like to see. He has a really good personality. We're going to try and learn all. We've got a few people looking at him. You can see there. Halifax looking at him. Joins us from Crystal Palace on a free, I think, will be a big player for us in the future. Another player I'm very hopeful for is Ishmael Kabia. He's Dutch. Under 20 cats, already good enough for League Two. Will get an artifact, is getting an RC. If we go to the player history screen, has already played four times for us, got an assist and a seven rating for us. Won the UEFA Youth League last year with Arsenal. He looks like a very, very good player in the making. Personality wise, maybe not fully there, determination not fully there, but he looks like a very, very good player. I think we will agree. And, uh, could be turned over for a profit if he didn't if he doesn't stay with us for the duration. Uh also for Arsenal, Kamani Ryan, another winger, possibly slightly better mentor, but not quite as good a footballer, but has also played for us. So he's he made two appearances on a six point six join us from Arsenal, going to Arsenal from Chelsea, that's controversial. But again, we'll see if he can develop into a player for I think he'll start racing into the first team as a regular Possibly towards the back end of the season would be my prediction for Pamani Ryan. Uh, we also have brought in Lawrence Ferdinand from Brighton, another goalkeeper from Brighton. Possibly better potential than the other one. He's got a road to Enfield. He's only 18. We'll see how he develops. But he's played very well for Enfield in the National League South. So hopefully that will help out a lot. Here's what we're looking for. I've got Ashton Missing from Manchester United. He's a right winger primarily and i like this kid i really really like this kid um his mentors aren't fully there but he will with mentoring i think get better he's very very quick which is ultimately what it's all about on the wing and uh, his passing his technique first touch dribbling all incredibly good for this level i've sent him alone to ebb sleep for now but I think we're going to see him improve. I think we're going to see him improve very, very rapidly, is what I'm hoping for. Uh, we also brought in Oliver Iro from, uh, from Tottenham. He's got on to Queen of the South in Scotland, which is apparently a common move that play, people are making now. Uh, he has already played twice for us in the league, off the bench, but I felt like his development needed to, him to be playing. Oh, uh, we can see he's got a bit determined personality. He's got a few things in the right places. And I just think as a guy who prepared for across the front three, having him playing regularly at 18 is going to be much more beneficial to us than keeping him around off our bed. And honestly, Queen of the South are not playing on an awful level. I think he'll smash League One in Scotland, come back to us and be quite the footballer. I've just got a feeling. And Dylan Charlton, who we saw before we got out on loan, joined us from Newcastle. I don't know if he's related to the, the Charltons. He's from the right area. He's from Newcastle. Uh, he's a centre half, a left back, left wing back. Very good all round. His personality is not fantastic in that his determination is not great. But well, all we can do is send out on He's gone to Radcliffe Borough in the National League North. Let's see what he does. Let's give him a chance to develop. I see what he becomes as a footballer. I know I said I wasn't going to do more big traps, I wouldn't know, but it happens. Uh, Liam McElhinney, go back to him, from Leicester. He's gone to learn to the links. Irish under-18 international with big potential, big determination. That's what we love to see. Everything is in the right place. Honestly, I would play him in League 2 with these technicals, but uh, Ollie had different ideas, I think, and didn't rate him quite so highly. But again, season alone, see how he goes, see how he comes back looking like. He could be a very good player. We just need to see what he can do. 
Jane Downs has joined us from Liverpool. He is a striker who's been dropped back, which we like to see. Again, quick, good determination, championship potential. I've sent him on loan to Forest Free. He's gone now to Nailed Worth for a little, uh, little trip to Gloucestershire. And uh, we'll see what he can do in that league. In that league, he should come back a much, much better player. And I'm looking forward to it. But again, it's all, it's all kind of slowly building for the future is what we'll do. Billy Terrell, another goalkeeper. He will probably be our backup this season. He's already played twice in the Carabao Cup this season, which is nice to see. Team Terrell uh, Bournemouth went to Wimbledon on loan a couple of times, had loans at Weymouth and Dover. Love to see it. Love to see this guy in action. I said, I think he'll be a backup, but if we get a good loan offer from him, we'll take it because, again, if he's playing, he'll improve. Archie Mayer, though, he came in this season to be our number one goalkeeper, quite frankly, because I think he's very, very good. Scottish under 20, or former Scottish under 21 international. Came for Aberdeen, moved to Norwich, had a loan at Kings Lynn, at Lincoln, at Dartford, at Fox County. He's bounced about a bit. Uh, had a loan at Gateshead last season and didn't play, which doesn't make any sense to me at all. He's a very, you know, a decent league two player, but I think this guy's actually a very good all round goalkeeper. And I think got great determination. We're just going to have him as our, well, I, I signed him with the intention of being our number one. Ollie agrees because he's played him four times. And yeah, I think regular a football, he becomes a very, very good goalkeeper, our potentially long term number one. Uh, Teddy Sharman and Lowe also, lots of goalkeepers signed, as we know. It's, it's all essentially we're going to farm that on loan and let them develop. That's all I'm doing here. I noticed him played in the FA Cup this weekend, but Carlton for the life member who thought, I want to say Barrow. He played for Barrow this weekend. Anyway, uh, he has Kelbrook Burton, joined Chelsea, uh, and then had a loan at Haven and Waterlooville, where he's fairly done fairly well. So we'll see what he does in terms of future development. Before he's done a whole lot of free transfer. He came in from Nottingham Forest, originally at Manchester United, 19 years old. Again, great potential. That's what he's been signed for, is to see how he develops and he can play in the centre of midfield and on the right-hand side, which is going to be very useful for us, I feel like, going forward. So, uh, again, it's just bodies, bodies in the squad, players for the future. Sonny Al uh, Al-Jafri, I never know how to pronounce his name. Uh, he is a Manchester United player on loan to us, played for Accrington in League 2. Ironically, we've just drawn that in the FA Cup second round in real life. Uh, has played for Altrincham as well, and uh, I like this kid. He's pretty quick. He's pretty tall. Everything is in the right place. We'll see what he does if Oli fancies him. He's not played him yet, but it could be because I brought a lot of players on loan again. It's not out the realms of possibility. We've also got Kaelin Casey on loan from West Ham at ten and a half. He is playing not well, but he's playing, and again, he's got that determination, pace, height, and. And the man can pass the ball. The man's a born the bearer. Uh, it's, it's probably, a, it's part of me thinking he's probably a better defensive midfielder than he is actually as a seven and a half. But it's up to Ollie. So we'll see what happens with him. Uh, Ethan Arlinson today is a left back centre half Norwegian under 21 international loan from Chilla. Has been playing all he's been using. I think he's been using him on off as a left back. It's good. Yeah, playing as a left back as an inverted fullback and a centre half. So using it to his full capacity, not as good as the other players I've brought in, but Oli for some reason fancies it more. So we'll we'll work that out. We'll see how that goes. Uh Charlie Robertson's joined on loan from Fulham as a centre half. And he's also been playing and looks like quite a good little player. I don't know if I'd say he will grow our best two centre halves, but you know, we'll trust Oli on loan from Fulham see what he can do and see if he develops as a footballer. Uh, Yaina Mascara has also got a centre-half. Essentially, all our centre-halves last season, you remember, were old. <laughs> they were, they were aging a little bit. So I looked to replace all the loanies, lots of loanies, just throw out the wall, hope something sticks. He's Colombian, he's under-20 international at 19. Previously with Deportivo Pereira, and uh, with Socrates Valencia in Colombia before they were apparently signed him and uh, we're going to give him a chance because he's got everything we looked for in a young player. So if he, if he can play and improve, great stuff. I did spend some money too. I know, crazy. I spent some money. It happens occasionally. Uh, I brought Nathan Apoku 
uh, as a striker. She's quick. She plays well as a, a pressing forward. And as a deep line forward, you can see this both roles fairly well. Determination is there. Potential not necessarily. He's 23, Ghanaian. And allegedly, he wants his cap. But the determination is good. The pace is good. I feel like he can start scoring goals. Won't stop. It's just a, fi a feeling I've got. Played six times in the Premier League for Leicester last season off the bench. And uh, he's played twice for us in the league by 6.4. But he's had a goal and a game in the League Cup. So, you know, if he's, as I said, I just feel that once he starts firing, he's not going to stop. I just don't have to, he's one of those players that get that feeling about. I spent money on a centre half as well. Quarter of a million quid for Joe Lewis as a centre half. Two well shows in the squad, I think, confusingly, all the time. He's only played once in the Carabao Cup. This might be a waste of money because Ollie obviously doesn't fancy him. But, yeah, he's played a lot of games for Wimbledon, for Torquay, for Stockport, for Swansea. He played for Swansea, he didn't play for Swansea. But, yeah, I spent money on him because I thought he looked good. So that's the theory we are going with. Uh, because I'm addicted to goalkeepers, I saw Charlie Setford was available for loan. Charlie Setford, they always had a long save with with any team in FM, will probably have noticed that Charlie Setford usually develops to be England's number one goalkeeper in the game. And uh, he was available on loan from Ajax. And I thought, absolutely, for sure, we'll take Charlie Setford on loan. And he's been playing. So him and Archie Mayer are competing for the number one share. And frankly, he's had one appearance, one clean sheet, and a 7.6 average rating. So we like that very much. Uh, the low side is continuing with Malik Yalkoye. Uh, he's a holding midfielder, very good holding midfielder, with everything in the right place there as well. Uh, he has played only a 6.6, .6, but he got a to us from Brighton. Had a loan last season at Stern Graz in Austria, so I assume played some European football. He did, and uh, came to the A Sigma Moses Academy in Ivory Coast, one of the best academies in Africa, possibly world football. And has three chats for Mali already. So it should be pretty good for us. I brought in Zach Orr on loan as well, just again looking for centre half options. Came, comes on loan from Southampton, came through at Arsenal, played for Ashbridge again last year. Uh, he's, he's so, so, you can see for yourself, such a good footballer, such a good all round footballer. As a, as a central defender, fantastic. As a ball playing defender, fantastic. Very, very happy to have him in the squad. Hasn't played for us yet, but he has, I think, only just joined at the end of the window, literally yesterday. So he's not had a chance to play yet. Uh, again, I spent my money. I, I had a budget and I was going to spend it. It was essentially my plan. And uh, Talaji Bola, a Nigerian, comes in as a left back. I think he should be our first choice left back. Oli hasn't played yet, but again, he's just signed. Had a career that could take him to Lincoln. That's what we signed it from for 135k. Previously at Rotherham at Bradford and came through Arsenal's academy. So you know you put a player in there somewhere and he's so quick. That's what I want from a, from a fullback. He's just quick. A quick, quick wing back. Hopefully Ollie agrees with me. And our final signing of the summer was Lewis Brown, who can play everywhere up the centre in terms of defensively, centre half, defensive midfield, regular midfield, a player for the future, 19 years old, and he joins us from Bournemouth after a couple of loans, including in the World Premier League last year. But I feel like this kid, his determination, if we can get that up with some, uh, some mentoring, I think will become quite the player. But let's skip forward to the end of January and see if my plans have, uh, have worked out. So January rolls around and, uh, well, things are doing in a way that I would describe as uh, not shabby. Uh, we sit in 10th in the table, which is nice, but we do have uh, a few teams around us with games to hand over us. 46 points, 12 wins, 10 draws, and 11 losses. So about as middling a, as middling a season as you can probably imagine, to be honest. That's, uh, that's just how life goes. In terms of how we've been playing though, so far this season, in terms of just, you know, general, general form, I guess. Let's get rid of these bloody friendlies again. Uh, season start off, as you saw in a, up and down the way, and honestly, the first half of the season wasn't fantastic. Uh, lots of losses, lots of draws, 
big win at home to Barnsley, a 4 0 there, which was nice to see. Uh, but otherwise, we've just we've been really struggling at both ends of the field, really. A lot of draws in there, a lot of narrow losses, because we're not scoring goals, we're not doing well keeping them out. He saw what's happening. Things did improve a little bit in or from November where we got sort of less losses, lots of wins and draws just to kind of balance things out, including a trip to Reading in the FA Cup second round where naturally because we played a local rival, we lost. Story of our lives. We did beat Bristol Rovers though, so it's not all hopeless. And uh, we also beat in Colchester. We beat in Mansfield, beat in Portsmouth. A nice story is Birmingham as well, which is kind of good to see in there. Beat Bristol Rovers again, so we've done the league double over Bristol Rovers, sparing my blushes just a little bit. And uh, that's all where we're at come the end of January with a few games left to play and um, one more game against Reading. I think that's actually how we did the for Oh, we've lost Reading in the league as well, which is not helpful. Uh, obviously, January, I needed to make some changes. I've tried to fix things as best I can. So, look at the outs first for the ins because i need to raise some funds and i did that in whichever way necessary essentially so we let lewis brown go alone to absolute for a fee ollie clark has also gone to absolute for a fee tristan aberdeen goodridge has gone to bromley for a fee as well the big one though was gavin kilkenny has joined motherwell you know i said watch his value well it's worth 8.8 to 11 million for motherwell but they paid us four and a half million quid with a couple of add-ons for it. I do not turn down four and a half million quid for a player in League One for anybody. He could be the next Lionel Messi, and he's not. And I wouldn't turn down four and a half million quid for him in January. I can only invest that in a squad, and I have done. Sean McGurk also left. He wasn't signing a new contract. It was disappointing. So, to, in fact, he, he said he was going to consider his option. And I was like, do you know what? I'll, I'll decide your options then, shall I? 200k to Plymouth. Yes, it's a league rival, but he didn't want to be here. So we've let him go. That's fine. I'm absolutely fine with that. Uh, Rio Cardenas didn't make it. And we sold him for £5,000 to Western Connect in Trinidad. Disappointing that he didn't really improve a lot. But you know what? We, we're not here to, to make friends and keep playing around for no reason. Uh, Williams Fintolo finally left to go to Beta Club, which I'm guessing is in Congo, is £10,000 for a player who realistically wasn't playing a lot of football for us. So if all he is on fancy, in we go. That's the rules. Um, and that's, of course, I'm keeping around for the future. Uh, Callum Cissé has gone on to Bromley. Teddy Charlotte finally doing Altering on loan. I also said Joel McGregor and Fido Fisher on loan earlier in the season, saying all of the Eero. Ashton missing, a few players got out on loan as well. That I don't think I mentioned before. Uh, Tarek Owakwe, who, again, sad to lose him because he's a really lovely fellow in real life. But £27,000 for a player that Ollie wasn't playing, just it just it made sense to me to let him go and uh, let him carry on his career, which is fair enough. Uh, Ishmael Kabir, who we signed in, in the summer, Norwich paid me a million, they offered me a million quid for him. And to be fair, I could have pushed this deal up further. I probably could have got two and a half, maybe, maybe three million for him if I'd really pushed. But I used the old Bray cells and I got 40% of his next fee for him. I'll tell you why. I think he's going to play for Norwich. Probably, he's played for them in the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup already this season. But, or maybe played for us. But they're at the top end of the championship, and I think they'll go up. They've looked really good. They've looked, they've looked like they're on really good form, especially when you consider that the season preview had been in seven. I just have a sneaky suspicion they're going to go up the Premier League. He's going to go alone somewhere and sell for really big money. I think he will sell for probably, I would say it's worth 110 to 1.1. I've got a feeling, just based on my experience, because he's developed fairly well, and played very well for us. Just based on that FM experience, I think he's going to go for 10 to 12 million at some point in the future. So I think that I can have two and a half million up front, or I can have 40% of 10 to 12 million. I'm not stupid. So I, I gambled on his potential. And finally, Matthew Dennett has gone on to more. 
In terms of players I brought in in January, as I said, lots of money into the club, six and a half million into the club to reinvest forward. I had to do it. So I brought in a few players. Uh, Josh Brooking has come in from Sunderland as a centre half slash right back. He can do both very, very well. And I think he will. He has played a few games for us so far this season, but was on loan at Stockport and was doing very, very well as well. And uh, I think £375,000 for him. He's a South African international. I think it's a bargain. I think that's really, really well spent. So we'll see how that looks for us as we approach the end of the season. Uh, Liam Coyle also signed formerly a little more, of course, £120,000 from Africa to Saturday. A good first and tell squad play has played a handful of games for us since joining, and I think looks like a really, really good player. And uh, that determination will probably make him into a late, but I've got a feeling he's one of the players in the game this year who becomes very, very good late on in his career. And I didn't think that the 120k we've spent on him was too much money for that gamble, to be honest. So that's what we're hoping for. That's what I hope we get out of Leo Coyle. Alex Iacoviti has joined us from St. Mirror for 1.1k, four caps at the under 21 level for Scotland. And again, who can play left back and centre half, both very well. Should be a good squad player. He's come off the bench for us already. Played in the A League for Brisbane and also has played a lot of times in the Scottish Premier League. Has played down south as well, of course, for Forest and for Mansfield, for Forest Green, for Oldham. Knows what he's doing. Absolute steal at 1.1k. Even if I sell him on for two grand, I had done well. To be honest, so that's good times. Uh, Ethan Hamilton came in as well from Scotland, or is Scottish. Started off at Man United, loads of Rochdale, South End, Bolton, Peterborough, Africa, Stanley, Lincoln, Boyd, 50k. He's done pretty well for Lincoln, so I thought 250,000 wasn't a lot to spend on him given we have so much money in the bank. He's played twice for us already, which is nice, and can, again, can cover a lot of position. Three and a half star at ball winning midfielder. I think suits what Ollie's trying to do. He's a little bit older, I think, than Ollie would like, but I think suits what Ollie's trying to do very, very well. And he's just a generally good all round footballer. Uh, Connor McLennan joins us from Salford for 175k. Plays on both sides, plays everywhere in some manner or fashion. Has come off the bench for us already, so I think Ollie might like him as a signing. Again, 25, not necessarily the youngest player, but has played a lot of time in the, in the SPL, which I like. Played a lot of games for Salford and did fairly well for them. I don't think he's a big gamble, so we'll see how he shakes out. Uh, this player, I'm so happy with the side. You're going to cry when you see the fee I've paid for him. Uh, Mihailo Ivanovic joins us from Millwall. He's Serbian. 921 counts at four goals. I'm paying him a lot of money. And he doesn't necessarily look like he is the greatest player just yet. But he's play played one game, scored a goal for us. I paid just over half a million for him. And he's obviously got pedigree because he got loaned to Sampdoria, played in Serie A, Millwall played him in the championship off the bench. I obviously fancy him. And I said, one goal, one game so far. I think there's a secretly a really, really good player hiding in here. And he's 20 years old. He's already potentially worth a million quid. I think I've done well to get him here. And I think he'll be well for us going forward. I actually must be there to go on loan. Before I mentioned I'd signed him, uh, he came in from NK Dons. Again, plays everywhere up top. I messed up a little bit, signed more players than I could register. He's 22. I sent him on loan to Morgan. Just to give him a year where I'd actually play some football and develop. We'll see how he goes. Uh, he's still been playing a lot anywhere, but the scouts think he's good. And I've been trusting my scouts quite a lot. So we'll see how that goes. They've done me well so far. Kieran Gilligan has also come in for 130k. Defensive midfielder, National League level, could develop to League One player. Came through Burns Academy though, played a lot for Burton in his time there from 38 league games. Burton's academy is very, very good. So we're going to gamble on the fact that he's a very good player, but they were willing to sell us at Serie Dust. He's not the biggest player in the world, 
But, you know, sometimes skill gets you over the line. He might go on one at some point, but I think he's one for the future more than for now. Then I'm back to the loan market because God knows where he is bodies. Maradi Sissoho is a Spanish under something international, I think. He's, uh, he's also, in case you're wondering, not quite an African second nationality, he's English. Uh, he comes to us from Manchester City, plays as a defensive midfielder slash right back, which is fair, he's not the tallest, but played last season in League One for Peterborough, did fairly well. Feel like he's had a year of growth. That might be misleading. We'll see if he gets into our team and forms for us. Obviously, from City, their academy is very, very good. Cody Williams took them from Cardiff, has played for them in the championship this season. Again, he's cover for everywhere. Uh, he was brought in last year, see if he develops feel for us. And because I want to see if we can maybe get in his favourite clubs and sign him, because I think his potential is worth us gambling some money on. So we'll see how he does for us. See if the gaffer fan fancies him. Uh, Kian Taylor, I've used him in a rebuild at Preston, but I forgot to upload or record. Uh, I really like this kid. He developed very well, turned into a very good championship player. Alan again, see if we can get him on loan, get on his favourite favorite clubs list and sign him on a free because he should get one each to the end of this season if my calculations are right. So again, once in the future, we kind of just extended more play, extended trial. Nico O'Reilly has joined us on loan again. Uh, didn't want to come back in the summer. Has decided to come back this year after spending half the season on loan at Mansfield. Doing fairly well for them, but he knows us. He knows our gaffer. He knows our system, and I think we'll probably help us out to push up the league a little bit. As like I said, we are sitting in 10th right now, so if we can maybe sneak towards the playoffs, I won't be unhappy. Uh, finally, three more, yeah, three more players on loan, and again, I, well, actually I should have had to pay fees for these ones, but we've got the money. I'm not panicking. Paris Nodoma has come in on loan for Brentford. I really love Paris Mago. I think I had a slot. It was either him or his brother I had a slot. Uh, Jordan Solo would pay 140k to loan him from Brentford for the rest of the season. But I think he will play, and I think he'll develop, and I think we'll spend money on him at the end of the season, to be honest, because uh, his value is low, which tells me his contract is running down. It is. We'll see if I sign at the end of the season, because he is a very good player. And will develop played for both Don sides, which is controversial. Cross cross the divide in the same season. I bet he was a popular chat. I want to see. I want to see if he'll sign for us and develop further. Uh, I also, as I said, I had to address the issue of we're not scoring goals. We're not keeping them out. That's why I've been investing both at the back and up front. Josh Thomas comes all over from Swansea at twenty-two. Nine caps and five goals for Wales' under 21s. And had a load at Bromley last year. Got six and 33. Not necessarily prolific, but he has played for Swansea a couple of hours off the bench this season. And they've used him in the cut. He's done well, done well at under 21 level. I think he's good enough to be in our starting lineup. He plays that pressing forward role that really suits the, uh, the counter attacking 4 3 3. So we're going to see if we can get him developing, get, get gold out of here. And just as a backup, I went for an experienced striker as well. Connor Whitman does all the same things that Josh Taylor does. I'm oh, sorry, Josh Thomas does. But with more experience. Can be hit and miss. Uh, has been across the course of his career. Not been doing so well for Charlton since they signed on a free last season. Played in the championship for Cardiff the year before that. Forest Green on the teams didn't go well for him. Preston didn't go well for him. But has played in the Premier League for Palace, has played in the Championship for Antra in the Premier League for Sunderland, and played in the Championship for Leeds and Sheffield Wednesday. So the ability is there. We just need to tap it. Never has got double figures in a season, which is why I need him, but 50 goals in 250 games for a target man isn't a bad return. So having a certain with this little squad, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do for the rest of the season. Hope everything goes well. We're only 10 points off the playoffs. Let's see if we can push on. So, end of season two, and uh, well, we slipped just a touch, just a touch. It's not been great. We dropped down to 12, but let's be fair, nearly probably signed. Season preview probably had us as going down, or 21st, just before any relegation. 
So being a 12th, actually quite good. Quite a strong finish for the season. Unfortunately, Reading went up, but, you know, one less rival to lose to next season, which is fine. Let's have a look at the schedule and see how things have gone for us since, uh, since the end of January. Let's get, get in the right place. Get the friendlies again to the key point in the back. And uh, so, end of January, of course, we were, doing, we were sitting in tents. We hit a decent run of form coming towards January. We were doing okay. And then it collapsed again. Uh, we lost to Wrexham. We lost to Rotherham. We lost... Sorry, we beat Rotherham, lost to replace Rotherham, drew with Blackpool, uh, drew with Swan to the decent ish results. Then we lost to Peterborough. And then we beat Burton. But you'll notice um, a tactic change to a 4 4 2, something we have never ever seen Ollie do. And uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, if we go into our history here, you'll see that uh, Ollie decided of his own accord, I didn't sack him, decided to leave. Oh, I can't even find him. Why has he disappeared off that list? Let's find Ollie, because I know he left. I looked. First thing I do while I load into the new part of the save is I look. So, Ian Holloway is a manager. He's the manager of Ireland. He left us at the back end of March. So long after we came back last time. Left to the back end of the for release. I did release him. He resigned to go and become the manager of Ireland, which is an interesting choice. Don't think he's actually played any games in charge charge of Ireland since becoming the manager. Let's have a look. Uh, he's had a couple and won them both. So our boy is doing the business at international level. He has left us. Uh, another one of our coaching staff left as well, Marcus Bignon, just afterwards become manager of Eastleigh, which is very disappointing because I probably would have promoted him to being our manager. So, because <laughs> I like that, I like that continuity. Unfortunately, we couldn't do it. So I had to go looking around, see what I could bring in. And I have brought in Matthew Orr as our new manager, who, who gave as a manager, exceptional attributes for this level was available on a free because he's only just retired from playing. Didn't necessarily play at the highest level in his career, but looks like a really good manager. So he'll be our manager for the next episode, the next year of going forward. We're not wrapping up just yet. Don't, don't think of well, what, what has happened with what first. And we'll talk a bit more about Matty or our new manager. Uh, in terms of players playing, um, a lot of our siding has got into the side. It's gone fairly well uh, as, as these things go. It's gone fairly well. Uh, Ashford Missing, I thought, would play more games, but has only played eight appearances, which is concerning. Uh, Archie Mayer somehow has been able to keep swip swapping over his half Bershaw goalkeeper with Charlie Sethford all season, which I'm very impressed by. Because I thought Charlie Sepple would just come in, nail that number one jersey, and make it his own. Uh, Talaji Bowler, up there brought in this season, that has done very well. 6.99 on 33 appearances. Very happy with that. Uh, Keenan Bennett has come into his own this season, started playing regularly. Uh, Matthew James has played regular football. Again, love to see it. Uh, Nathan Napoku, 11 goals from Quick Mass, 43 appearances this season, 7 assists. Not a bad return for a fella just sort of taking his first proper steps as a footballer. Um, I said Rakeem Harper would eventually come good. He's had 33 appearances, 10 goals, 2 assists for us from midfield. Uh, disappointingly, John Daddy Budfarson's work permit expired. He was on an ESC and uh, he had to play 70% of the games to get a work permit and played 69%. Oh, I was fuming. Uh, I was fuming. That he played just under the right arm is. Uh, but he's had 39 appearances this season for 11 goals as well. So he's done very, very well. Three assists, especially at 32. One of our lower signings have played an excellent of football. Josh Brooking has only played 13 games, which I thought was a bit low. I thought he'd play more, especially with his versatility. Uh, Glatzel, again, not making many, many appearances for us. Uh, McLennan, I thought, will play more. I thought he played 14 times. And if Baradich has only played 14 times as well, but he scored six goals in 14 appearances. If I've got one question for Ollie after he left, 
How has this fellow got six, six goals in 14 appearances when your other two strikers only managed to level in 30 or and he's not, he's not becoming your first, the first name on your team sheet? Just, just a question. Uh, Will Wright's barely played, which is disappointing. He's a Hamilton has played a lot of football for us. But, well, it's not, sorry, has not played a lot of football for us, which is weird because he's got a three and a, a three and a half style rating. You'd think he'd get in more, but obviously, new manager, things will change. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Leon Coyle not played very much. Kerr McKinley has not played very much at all, which is a bit disappointing. Uh, I thought Kamali Ryo will get more starts, but he has played 22 men off the bench. So he's obviously been very highly fancied in the squad player and the both come and try and change things. He hasn't done that because he's only scored once and assisted twice, but he's been crusted off the bench and do things, which is nice to see. Uh, otherwise, uh, Alex Yakimiti. Hasn't played at all, really. Five games. Joe Lewis had three games. Josh Thomas on loan only got four appearances, but still two goals. So, uh, fair play to him, to be honest. He's been, and he's getting some minutes. Uh, Billy Terrell's had a couple of cup games. I assume Archie Woods has played a little bit. But really disappointing was that Odin Samuel Smith didn't, didn't find a loan or play. Uh, Connor Wickham only played once off the bench. Sonny Alioffrey. Only play once on the bench. Joel McGregor's not getting anywhere near enough minutes, which is very much starting to irritate me. Antoine Dvorak should be in the starting 11 by now, and I don't know why he's not. So it's all been ruined. Kieran Gilligan hasn't played at all. And Joe Walsh has played so rarely he's retiring. So swings around roundabouts is what we'll say about that. Uh, let's have a look at our new manager, though, just uh, how he expects to play. Uh, let's go to our material screen there. Beautiful stuff. So he likes to play with a 4 4 2, with his second preference being the 4 3 3 EMY that we were using. Likes counter attacking football. In fact, I've read that wrong. That's not good. Tends not to counter attack. Tends to play out the defense and use intense passing. Doesn't like set pieces. Doesn't like analysts. Doesn't like to cross, which begs the question why are you using a 4 4 2 if you don't like crossing? Uh, and also tends not to focus by down the flanks. Again, we have formations for that. They're, they're called diamond, buddy. Let's, let's, anyway, let's hope he figures that out because he's in charge now into the next episode. We're going to see how the Audi era starts and, uh, see how it continues. Hopefully he'll keep us up next season and we can start making progress. I'll try and build a team for him. I haven't built a team around a 442 in 10 or 15 years at least. And I've never built one out of 442 that doesn't use crosses or play down the flanks. So, uh, tune in next time for that, I guess, because that could be a disaster. Uh, right. Thanks for watching. Like, I haven't always been chasing my anything. Like, subscribe, ring the bell if you're new around here. Uh, leave comments down below. Tell me what you think. And, uh, until next time, do stay safe from there. Have a good one.